<laughs> What's up, FitFam? Guys with Thighs, episode 14. Hey, looks a little different. What's going on? Where's Derek? Well, you know what? Life gets in the way. That's perfectly okay. That's why there's three of us now. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you, which you already saw him in a, in a, in a different podcast and talked a little bit on the microphone, but here's the thing. He's going to be my co-host today, John Six. What's up, guys? I'm super excited to be here. Uh, you may see me here a little bit more. Might get another mic going. Might get me behind the, the laptop. Help Damn right. Out a little bit, Damn right. Excited for the podcast. Let's yeah, it. it's going to be a good time. Um, here's the thing, right? Life. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Especially with the summer coming up. Three guys with thighs trying to do a podcast. Actually, we're not trying. We're doing a podcast. We're doing it. We're doing a podcast. <laughs> and that's why we decided to shoot today. Because... We're always going to have things going on. I'm going to start traveling for Spartan races. I'm going to start traveling for the company. You're going to start traveling for the company. Derek's going to start traveling for the company, yep. right? And being able to be interchangeable, Semper Gumby, as we say it in the Air Force, mm -hmm. always flexible, right? Okay. We're going to be able to go in and out and still bring value to the people that listen to this awesome podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get into let's it. Let's get cracked. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> You went with the with the tropic today. Yes, sir. Yeah, this was right. my favorite flavor. Mine too. It grew on me. Um, I discussed in the past, like the first time I tried it, I was like, nah, fam. Mm -hmm. And then it was like episode two, I think we started drinking energies. And Derek finally got you to. And Derek got me one, <laughs> and yeah, and, and he's just like, just just give it a go, just give it a go. So in spirit, this man has led to my addiction. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember you talking about you're you're hesitant because it's pomegranate. Yeah. And when yep. you got in, you finally started liking it. Yeah, and here's the thing. I have this really bad tendency to call it Tropic Thunder. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. It gets a laugh out of everybody because that movie is absolutely hilarious. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, no, I mean, I'm <laughs> Tropic Light. Tropic, but, but I Tropic wish we could have called it that. It would have been funny, honestly. <laughs> honestly, I wish they would have put Robert Downey Jr.'s character on the I mean, yeah, like a little version of I'm a dude thing. playing a dude who disguises as another dude. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I need to watch that again. I was actually so mad the first time I watched that movie. Yeah, I actually thought it because I thought it was a war movie. <laughs> <laughs> you were mistaken. Dude, like, that was not even I was seriously like, what is? But it has like all my favorite actors. I mean, Matthew McConaughey's in there. Tom Cruise. We got Robert Downey Jr. Like. Ben Stiller, all of my favorite actors from my childhood were in there, and I'm just like, this is going to be awesome. Then I was like, what is this? <laughs> but then as I watched it again when I was older, I was just like, oh, this like, is okay. freaking great. Yeah, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite things, so I was in India, and I was doing stairs listening to the Joe Rogan, Robert Downey Jr. podcast. And um, they, uh, they're, it, was, it was right after Endgame. So right after like kind of the Marvel Phase 5 or Phase whatever. Yeah, for, I know like, what you're about. yeah, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Rogan asked Downey Jr. They're like, can can they even make it? <laughs> like in these days, and Downey was just like, well, you could make it. <laughs> I don't know how well you would do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you, you might get, you might you might never get another job, which is unfortunate because <laughs> the way that movie was, like, it was really really funny, and man, it was a different time. Yeah. It was a different time, but it was a good time. So. Absolutely. Well, I know you're in the middle of something that we want to talk about today. So, Do we? And you have been freaking killing it, bro. Man, well, it all coincided. So we're talking about 75 hard, right? Yes, sir. And um, it all coincided with kind of the challenge. And the reason I started on January 31st is to set my 2025 up for success. Okay. Now, this is, this is the epitome of long-term thinking, right? So, and it wasn't even my idea. My friend Jeff, he's at S2, and he's just like, hey, January 31st, we're starting. I'm What's going on? Why? Why would I wait? Why don't I start on the first with Andy? Mm -hmm. And he's just like, no, 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 you don't understand. He's like, phase three will be the first 30 days of January 2025. Okay. And yeah. so that means I'm starting January 2025 with the hardest phase of 75 hard. And like, in case anybody doesn't know, uh, there's more tasks per phase of 75 hard that you have to complete. And so the biggest challenge in the entirety of the program is going to be the first 30 days of uh, 2025, and I couldn't be more psyched about it. But first, I gotta get through these 75 days. Yeah. I had finished up day 38 yesterday, and I'm feeling strong, I'm feeling lean, I'm feeling healthy, and that's kinda like what I've been going for. But it coincided perfectly with the 
uh, eight week transformation challenge just kicked oh, the new yeah, year off, absolutely. right? Absolutely. And you so, got freaking shredded. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is where I struggle. And I think a lot of people struggle with this in the fitness industry. And I'm sure you've been here before too. Is that when you do good, but it's not your best. Oh, yeah. Like, so, so the date ended, right? In reality, fitness does not end. It goes until they throw dirt on me. My fitness life doesn't end, right? It ain't never gonna it, stop. It shouldn't, right? That's the mindset that I've developed now. But one of the challenges that I did, God, was that in 2023? That was in 2023. Yeah, you did, you yeah. did one last year, I remember. Yep. Yeah. But no, so end of 2024, right? The, we're talking, I'm talking the summer one where I got shredded. Oh, yeah. That, that was yeah. one where Andy challenged everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I got down, according to the in body, 3.8% body fat, right? And on this last one, I was 7.4. So I look at it and I'm like, man, I left stuff on the table. But in actuality, I'm under 10% body fat. I'm lean, I'm strong, I'm healthy. And I have a good, um, I have a very good relationship with food currently. That's and awesome, dude. being bulimic in the past, that is kind of the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. Is being able to take ownership over the food and not let it run my life yeah. and it, it's been a big step these last couple of years to be like no 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 I run this and being able to accept where I'm at and continuing to grind so like mm -hmm. I still have 35 plus days of 75 hard oh, yeah. so that 7.9% body fat according to the in body is going to come down it absolutely yeah is. so now my goal is to get into the fours again and then keep on rolling right into Summer Smash and get nice and lean for Summer Smash. Lean and tan, yeah. baby, I can't wait. Hell yeah. Well, I'm definitely gonna be on there or on that journey with you. Yeah. I'm gonna be tan, uh, I'm gonna burn myself. And I was about to say that, that little, that, that, <laughs> that, red, that red headed complexion. Yeah, you know? just a little bit too pale for getting tan, but I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm in prep myself, so I'm gonna be right there. Exactly, so how far out are you now? Uh, so it's right at 20 weeks. It should be 20 weeks okay. from today. So, All right, and, yeah. and you specifically said that you were doing a longer prep this time around. Can you tell me yes. why? Yeah, so I'm doing a much longer prep than I did for my last show, mm -hmm. uh, just because I wanna take it really slow. So this is this is actually really helpful for bodybuilding shows and just seeing long-term success on your journey too. Uh, and it's so I can take it slow and keep as much muscle as possible. So when I get to those last four weeks, I don't have to suffer quite as much too. Yeah. Uh, Cause if you try to do a 12 week prep, those last four weeks, they're, they're gonna suck because you have to really cut calories, really deplete yourself. And when you take it slow, you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. So, just, so yeah. realistically, you are trying to eat as much food as possible as late in prep as possible. Exactly. That sounds great. Yeah. And, and that's what happens when you take the long-term approach. Exactly. And you're working with Josh Ward, yes, right? Sir. And you guys are dieting, him, dieting down over that long period of time. So when is mm -hmm. your show exactly? Uh, so the exact date is actually not announced. They usually announce it around springtime, like April, May, uh, but it's usually in the third week of July. Awesome. Yeah, so awesome. that's exactly 20 weeks from today. That Saturday is usually the stuff. Hell yeah, we were rolling. Man, July Saturday. is a big month for mm -hmm. the guys with thighs. Uh, so, what, what do we got going? So I have uh, Monster Games in July. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so Caleb, right there, yeah, hey, what do you know? I'm <laughs> repping it. Um, Caleb and I qualified as intermediate teams for my first ever CrossFit competition. Caleb did it last year. Oh, let's go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Woo! I like functional fitness, so it's going to be a really good time. Um, so I have that. I'm going out to, in July, which which one do I have? Oh, Utah, to oh, run, a race, to Spartan run race. three Spartan races out there. I'm going to meet up with a couple of people already. Shameless plug, if you want to join Utah, <laughs> let's freaking get it on. Yeah. We got three races in Utah. That'll be really fun. Elevation's probably going to get me, but you know, oh well. Hey, it'll be, it'll be and, good for prep for the August one. And I know he's not here, but he's here in spirit. I guarantee you Derek has something going on in July. Oh, guarantee. So the guys <laughs> with thighs, we're going to be all over the place. Um, and man, it's going to be fun. This will be a good month for sure. Yeah. God. But yeah, oh. go back to the point with the long-term success. Yes, sorry, on, sorry. Oh, Tangent. no, no, we're good. We always do that. I'm, I'm <laughs> caffeinated. We are rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, for the long-term success on your journey, if you're not doing a bodybuilding show, mm -hmm. taking it slow like that is going to help you, uh, keep you from yo-yo dieting. So if you ever heard of yo-yo dieting, I'm sure everybody's yeah. heard that term before. That just means 
you diet really hard, hit your goal, and then you balloon back up to where you were before. Go right back down and balloon back up, and I've seen it a million times. I've actually gone through it myself before. Right? I, I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. I'm right there with you. That's what most people get into when they first start dieting. They think they have to eat 1,200 calories. Dude. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's like the misconception, right? Because so much goes into the amount of food that you can eat. What are, how are you moving every single day? How much mm -hmm. are you moving? Are you lifting weights? Are you not lifting weights? What is your lifestyle? Are you a construction worker? Or are you an office worker? Like it all goes into it. And just having that like blanket 1200 calories per day for females, maybe 1500 calories per day if you're a male yeah. to lose weight. And it's just like, yeah, that'll probably make you lose weight that'll until work. you plateau. And then all of a sudden you can't eat anything. Otherwise you gain a ton of weight. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to stay at that. 1500 calories if you want to stay yep. at that body fat percentage that you're currently at so if you take it slower you can have a lean physique yep. but you're eating a thousand more calories than that man that sounds really nice <laughs> yeah like for example really for myself nice. like over time i've been able to eat a lot more calories so didn't like, you push your calories to like 5,000? yeah dude it was yeah. it was insane that's it's, a lot of food hey it sounds like fun but after a couple 5,000 clean calories yes like you're not eating pizza it's no. easy it's easy to get to 5,000 when you eat pizza but your macros are all messed up yes proteins no, fats and carbs for people way too know. much fats if you're doing eating out all the time exactly and yep. carbs are for performance they fuel your workout mm -hmm. so we got to get a lot of carbs and that's really hard when you're doing it clean too uh, but I was not able to eat that much in the past like as you know I was an offensive lineman in high school <laughs> I know I, I, I still baffles my mind but yeah yes. most people are just like wait what like you were, you were a lineman but yeah I played left guard starting left guard my senior year yeah. <laughs> but yeah so back then I would eat probably 3,000 3,500 calories mm -hmm. and I would be gaining weight over time with me resistance training combined with my protein intake and consistently trying to get a little bit better I've been able to eat a ton more calories yeah and another big aspect of that was my movement so during that time I was getting 20,000 plus steps. So I had to jump up the calories a little bit because I was back in the warehouse with you guys. You know how it is with fitness. On your feet all day, <laughs> moving and grooving, baby. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so over time, I've been able to eat a lot more calories. So that's something that's extremely beneficial when you try to put on some muscle mass too. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are looking to lose fat, but putting on a little muscle mass is really beneficial for you in the long term to be able to keep a leaner physique and eat more food. And it's been amazing for me because I'm able to eat a lot more calories while I'm dieting. And it doesn't suck as much. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't suck right now. No, no yeah, but it, it will eventually. <laughs> in actuality, okay, let's be real. When you are doing a bodybuilding, bodybuilding show, physique show, whatever you want to call it, bikini show for females, everything like that, yeah. right? The last two weeks, it's gonna get rough. It's always gonna be a little it, rough. It's always <laughs> gonna be rough. No matter how much food, it's because you have to take away in order to get the physique that you want to go on stage with. Oh, so right. no matter what, be prepared. If you're wanting to do a show like that, those last couple of weeks are going to suck. Yeah. Like, but the old adage in the military, and I'm sure you guys have heard it, embrace the suck. Like oh, if yeah. you truly <laughs> want the goal, like you're going to embrace that. That is where the real, real character is built. And that is where the real winners come to play. Absolutely. Right? And the reason that he pushed his calories so high is that, you know, he doesn't want it to suck as much. Exactly. Right? Yeah, do a little <laughs> bit to help me out on the end there. Exactly. So, <laughs> it, like, it, it, it comes with the long game. And we've discussed in the past, is like, the goal is to build lean body mass tissue. Right? Yes. Like, you want to have as much muscle on your body as possible prior to creating a, or starting a cut. And then because your metabolism is going to, metabolism is going to be rubbed up, you can eat more food. You're going to burn more calories. Exactly. Muscle takes more calories to burn. Boom, boom, boom. You get to eat more and you're still getting leaner. It's yeah. pretty freaking nice. It's always nice. Right? Yeah. So and another reason why I do yeah. that long-term uh, diet mm -hmm. is also, so I have more ammo later on too. So I'm wait, able wait. to explain ammo. Sorry. So ammo is kind of like tools that I can use to help me keep losing more fat. Keep going. So things like I won't, I'm not going to start taking a fat burner towards till the end of prep mm. because it's going to be like when I hit a plateau, mm -hmm. I have another tool. I have more ammo to actually Got it. fix the problem. So, yeah. And you leave it in the chamber as long as possible. Exactly. So don't use it until you actually need it. 
that's super beneficial in prep because you're gonna hit a lot of plateaus. Like your body's going to fight you. Yeah. Like it does not want to be that way. Like getting down to four or five percent body fat, you've done it. It's unhealthy. It, you it lose your sex drive. 100%. You you are always lethargic, man. I had some headaches. Like oh, yeah. my body is just on. It doesn't want to hold on to water. Oh, like there was days that I couldn't have bowel movements. I had greens twice a day, digestive enzymes, probiotics, everything. And brother, it would not happen. I was just like, what is going on? It's because my body was using everything for fuel mm -hmm. that like, it didn't matter, right? Um, and, and that's what, like your body's going to fight you when you get that low. A thousand percent. That's yeah. why you want as much tools in the toolkit as possible. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm laughing a lot on that because at the end of prep, it's actually very well known in the bodybuilding community that it's kind of hard to get that poop out the, the day of the show or the day before the show because yeah. you're so lean, mm -hmm. you gotta get dehydrated a little bit. So it's actually, it's a huge win to be able to do that on the day of the show. So I've definitely been there before. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta get your coffee in the morning, take your greens, like do everything you can. <laughs> your magnesium, your greens, you double mm -hmm. scoop it all, yeah. <laughs> you, you give it a go. At the same time, or you'll, you'll be good. But yeah, it can it can get very difficult there. <laughs> that, that's really funny. Maybe maybe TMI, but that's I mean that <laughs> but it's being real. Yeah. Like that if anybody watching this wants to do something like that, that's what is going to occur. So mm -hmm. it's really beneficial to talk about that hey, it's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows especially when you get on stage. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, smiling and having fun and like getting on stage is a great benefit and a great experience and everything like that but leading up to it it can get tough oh yeah but in order to achieve what you've always wanted to achieve in all aspects of life it's gonna be tough right yes and like the more that you lean into that the better you are going to be as a human and I, I don't think there's anything better than physical fitness that that kind of describes that. Can teach you that. That can teach you that. You yeah. can apply that to every area of your life. Hundred percent. Mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial. Like, yeah. like the more you lean into that discomfort, the more you can learn and the better you can be. And then it can just spread like like a wildfire in your life. Exactly. Yeah. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and I actually talked about it this morning on the walking talk. It's fill your cup. I right? saw that. Yeah. Yeah. And. A lot of people just like to give, 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 and they forgot to, they forget to fill up, right? And it's very, very important to be selfish so you can be selfless, right? 100% agree. Yeah, and this is something that a lot of people miss because like, dude, I'm, I'm a really caring person. I actually like to give, like, like when, I, when I get a lot of money, I'm gonna give so much of it away. It's gonna <laughs> be great and I can't wait. And, and the reason that I like doing that is, I don't know, I like to see people smile. I like to see people like, like, like just light up. Yeah. Like, even if it's just as simple as giving somebody a hug or somebody did this for you recently, right? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, so I, I was thinking about this a lot recently just because like I have gone through, within the past two years, I if you ever heard of the success curve, you, I've got your way up. It's like, oh, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. You get to the top, and then you think you're the shit. And then you mm -hmm. stop doing what you know you need to do to have success. Yep. And I hit that bottom curve. I went down. It happens to all of us, mm -hmm. and it sucked. Peaks and valleys. Yep, there's always peaks and valleys. Uh, but what really helped me start going back up the other side of that hill was two people just showed me that they cared. Mm -hmm. And it was super simple, really short conversations that I had with them. Uh, and that's something you talk about on your Instagram all the time. It's just show people that you care. Send that text. Give somebody a call. Talk to somebody for a little bit. It could take five minutes. You could change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. uh, but the two people that really changed my life with probably five-minute conversations or less. Uh, both named Josh, actually. Nice. <laughs> we got a lot of Joshes. There are way too many Joshes. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. good people. All good people. Yeah, and uh, so we don't get it mixed up. My advisor is Josh Ward, and the first one I want to talk about is also Josh Ward, but it's a different one. <laughs> so we got two Josh Wards, we got so many Josh. We like to keep people confused. Yes, all the time. <laughs> but yeah, so all he did, I can tell he was on a mission, 
Mm-hmm. Like, you know how Josh gets, like he gets locked in, he's got to go get whatever is on his mind done. Yep. <laughs> and I could tell he was about to go get something done. He saw me stop everything, what he was, or he stopped what he was doing mm. and just asked me like, hey, how you doing, bro? Like, what's your, what's your plan to start moving back up again? And that conversation went on for a little bit, but it took a couple minutes. And him just showing me that he cared by asking me like, hey, how are you doing? Let's make a plan so that you can start progressing again. Mm-hmm. That meant everything to me. Like, yeah. And it took two minutes out of his day. And then Josh Becker, he, is, uh, he runs a bunch of different things back in the warehouse, kind of the uh, HR side of things. He's the go-to, man. Dude, he he's is, the go-to. He is the man. If he doesn't know the answer, he'll get it to you. And he'll figure it out. And then he'll figure out who to talk to in order to get it done. Yes, yeah. every single time. Like, if you give him a task, it's getting done. Yeah. You can trust that. Uh, but yeah, he just stopped me one day. He could tell I was a little stressed out, had a little extra anxiety that day. And he just stopped me and was like, dude, you're going to freaking kill this role. Like, you're going to do so well. Like, I've seen what you can do. You're going to progress extremely fast and you're going to do whatever you set your mind to. He just gave me that confidence that, like, this is something that I've done for a long time. So I was back at entry level in the warehouse packing boxes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, bro, you're really good at this. I'm like, have confidence. He bro. just you're gave you that me. affirmation that mm-hmm. you were you were doubting yourself. Yes, exactly. Like he could see it on my face because I I know Josh very well. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, dude, come on, like you got this, bro. Mm-hmm. That's all I needed that day. Like that was, and then I, every time I thought about it, it gave me more energy. It's just that one thing to flip that switch back to positivity that helped me keep progressing in probably the hardest time of my life. Dude, I absolutely love that and. For those two to do that for you, it's not surprising, oh, because yeah. they are such amazing human beings. And and people don't know, but like Josh Ward is the manager of the warehouse. He had he is responsible for every package. His name is on the label, the return label. Yeah, you guys he, probably seen it before. Yeah, he is re- <laughs> he is responsible for every single package that goes out of this. For him to take time out of his day, just a couple of minutes, right, to show that he cares for you, because he does. That's the 1, thing. One thousand percent. And take that time and to help you get your ass back in gear exactly. and moving forward. But like, what a pivot point. Uh, and, and, and all it took was two minutes. Exactly. And sometimes it doesn't even take two minutes. Sometimes it can just be a freaking high five, man. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, is that like, I, I always contribute to telling people, reminding people to be like, Hey, let people know you care. Give them a call. You don't know, like time is fleeting. Right. Um, but it goes back to the, <laughs> So it was a drawing and it was a person in a hole and it was a person walking by and it said never be afraid to help somebody because it might not make your day but it could mean the world to them because you never know what somebody is going through and it's, it was just so powerful and it's just like I get it we're all stressed out a lot but being kind to a human being will never go out of style. Never. Never. And because it can it can completely change, you know, your life. It can give you the confidence that you already know. Deep down, you already know that you are going to be successful. But just an affirmation of like, hey, we've seen you do this. We know you can do this. <laughs> and then look at you now, freaking killing. Hell what yeah. are a few things that you've learned? In, what, three weeks now? Yeah, I'm uh, starting my fourth See week to, uh, on uh, on Monday. Yep. I'm finally getting out of training, getting on my night shift. I love getting out of training. Yes, sir. I feel like I get my training wheels off and I can actually go do my job. Mm-hmm, exactly. I love it. Uh, but yeah, the biggest thing that I've gotten from working in customer service so far was just, I mean, this is something personally that I take away from it that helps me, yeah. is the immediate feedback that I get from the customers, whether you do good or bad. Like uh, that first message that you get back, you can tell like, did I take care of this person? Did I solve the problem or did I not? And you know, yeah. very quickly, <laughs> you know, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, you know, if you said something wrong very quickly. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, so I've had really good conversations with people uh, that I've already made friends with that I'm, I can tell them to be friends with them for life. Like yeah. I had one 30 minute phone call with a guy, he's, he's from Damn. Texas. Yeah, no. 30 was, minutes. 30 minutes, yes. Yeah, so Hell yeah. 35. <laughs> Solving problems out here. Exactly. Uh, and that the problem was that he just needed a friend. I could tell he did. Um, 
but he just opened up about his journey. I just uh, got goosebumps, bro. That's, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, dude, it's such a great feeling. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this guy, he, in the past five or six weeks, uh, so, to, so to preface that, he just started TRT because his levels were extremely low. He's in his 30s, mm. uh, so that helped him a lot. Uh, but within the past five or six weeks, he's put on 20 or 25 pounds of muscle. It was oh, somewhere in that, in that range. Yeah. <laughs> and he actually, he told me that he started his journey a little bit over a year ago and was an alcoholic, was drinking a lot. Mm. Um, and he stopped that as well. He, he sent me a picture of the, like when he was drinking all the time to now, and I was just like, bro, you gotta post this. Like share this with everybody. It's in one of the best transformations I've seen. Mm -hmm. Like dude looks like he could get on stage right now. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Holy yeah, prep. He'd have to go through a prep, but he has enough muscle to do some damage on a stage. That's awesome. <laughs> that's that's crazy. How just a little bit of a change, and I mean you played a role in this journey too. Oh, like yeah. now, like can make all the difference in somebody's world in somebody's Absolutely. life. But yeah, so, but while I was on the phone with him, he DM'd me those pictures, those transformation pictures uh -huh. uh, through Instagram. And I was just like, bro, you've got to post this. Not, not even an hour later, he made a full post, had his full caption explaining his journey a little bit. Uh, and I saw comments from people he hadn't talked to in a long time. He was telling me he hasn't talked to a lot of people from his past life of mm -hmm. drinking a lot. And he got comments from a bunch of different people from his life, yeah. or from that past life, that were just like, oh, dude. This is freaking awesome. Like, you've killed this transformation. I haven't seen you in a while. You look completely different. Uh, so he immediately made that ch or made that post and changed multiple people's lives just from that one post. Yeah, and now they might get on the path. Exactly. Because he's shown what is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and I, I knew right away when he was talking about he's trying to put on muscle, started uh, throwing some MFers in there. He's from Texas. I was just like, this is my guy. Uh, I, yeah. I already love this man. You? <laughs> we, did we just become best friends? Yeah. He's like, yeah, we did. Exactly. That's awesome, man. So the, the relationship building, the connection, the ability, the ability to help people, um, that sounds, sounds unbelievable. What, yeah. uh, what else have you learned throughout the process? I would say that solving the problem always comes first and that can be translated to providing value to others mm. comes first like yeah. actually helping them make a change yeah. whether that's with helping them uh get their order error taken care of like if they're missing a product in their order mm -hmm. or if it's something they need help with with a product if they're they don't know how to take it or they don't know what a specific product does like providing value to people is probably the most important thing that you can do in life to have fulfillment because I haven't felt this good in a long time just because I have like so at the end of the day we get our numbers and I can see I see that number is how many people's lives I changed that day mm -hmm. and you can get a lot of or you can change a lot of lives in one day in customer service uh, but I've just learned that like actually providing value to people is the most or the best way that you can be fulfilled yourself mm -hmm. so like when I was in that dark time in my life, the best thing that helped me was actually helping other people. Like to get you out of that hole, start putting your focus on some other people just to start. So that's like you were talking about, fill your cup first. Obviously you gotta fill your cup. You have to have value to provide, to actually provide value. It's, mm -hmm. it's very simple, but a lot of people try to go help people and they don't have much to provide for them. So make sure you have value to provide, but. The best way to get out of that that dark time is helping other people. Yeah, and, and that, God, we're touching on everything. We're touching on <laughs> fill your cup. We're touching on helping somebody fill their, possibly get out of the darkness to help, fill, help them fill their cup. Yep. That's pouring out of your cup that's already full. But here's the thing that I think, it goes right along with it. Because you have filled your cup in the past, you were just in a dark place. Yep. Meaning that you have stuff to pour out yeah. and by pouring into people it actually helped bring you up as well absolutely right like you're not out there spitting nonsense and fake and lies oh no no you're <laughs> pouring into somebody which then you see the light bulb go on which then makes your sh light shine a little brighter it might have been absolutely. dim right it might have been covered but it was still there and you had the knowledge to give you just weren't giving it for some reason life got you down right yeah. And then once you took that step and provided that knowledge, it lifted you right up. 100%. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so I think it, it, it all works together. Like, fill your cup. Reach out to somebody to help them fill theirs. You know, because then that will actually bring you up. Rising yeah. tide raises all ships. Absolutely. When, yeah, yeah, so I think it all works together. It's not working against it. It's, like, it's a freaking circle. But I think what's really, really important to drive home is that, you know, providing value, educating people, will get people to trust you in a way that I don't think people realize right oh, that's how you make a friend is by providing the truth providing the education and then that's how you build a strong relationship absolutely and I think that's everywhere like not only in the company but in um, in like a romantic relationship same thing like you have to tell the truth you have to provide value each of you to the relationship in order to build a strong foundation absolutely. so it's not only in sales yeah I think that's where a lot of problems in relationships stem from is where one party is providing a lot more value than the other mm -hmm. and the person finally gets tired of it and blows up a little bit so also yeah. make sure you talk about your problems too make sure you get that out before it boils over because that's something that I've struggled with in the past like ask for help when you need it don't be afraid <laughs> yeah yeah hundred percent and oh god yeah because you don't want that to to fester under the surface because eventually it's just like a volcano, it's gonna explode. And yep. when it does, it's probably going to leave a lot of carnage in its wake. Always does. Always does. So that that's an extremely, extremely good point. Yeah, you don't kind of know bouncing all over the place a little bit today, but it's probably because of this nice tropic lightning here, so. <laughs> this is a good conversation though. That, Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I enjoy having conversations like this. Um, here's where I wanted to, I'm gonna blindside you with this, question because right. like as I was brainstorming I'm like cool like what are we gonna figure out like me and six first time let's go and then um I was just like huh I wonder what his answer to this question is so here we are all right let's go <laughs> what is a hard lesson that you had to learn that you think would bring value to the people watching this video let's think about that one for a second go right ahead I can go with something really, really simple that that dark time really taught me. Um, it's something that I was good at before I got into that dark time, but you have to, sometimes you have to touch the stove to really figure out what the problem, to really learn that lesson. Yeah. Uh, and that is like when you are down, when you do have, shit happens in life. It happens to freaking everybody. Yep. The best thing that you can do to start progressing is take action. Like take action right now. Uh, something I struggled with a lot. I know a lot of people, a lot of other people do too, is overthinking. Overthinking like, oh, am I doing this right? Did I do enough? Did I do too much? Like, analyzing every single detail of everything. Like, I'm saying this, you're probably like, oh, yeah, that's you, sis. Like, people have told me that before. Overthinking can be detriment every single time. Uh, but taking action when you're overthinking erases all of that. What does taking action look like for you? Uh, so it's really just going and reading that book, hopping on Instagram, making some comments, or like going to the gym and actually like going out of your way to talk to, to go help somebody mm -hmm. um, and taking action. Whatever you need to do to progress towards your goals, like if you are overthinking, if you're having anxiety, you're a little bit depressed, like taking action is the best thing to switch that, to get you out of that. Uh, and that could be having a hard phone call with somebody that could be uh like holding your friend accountable like in person if they messed up like hey it's like you messed up let's do this next time to prevent this from happening and we're going to be good uh so having those hard conversations it could be just giving everything you got into a workout like no matter what you got to do just go go take action if you're if you have those anxious thoughts if you're depressed love it Love it. That's a good one. That's a good one. Mine is... Yeah, I was going to say, what about you, bro? Oh, man. <laughs> Except that you are the villain in somebody's story. Like, you, you're not always going to be the knight in shining armor, right? So, I, I use this example all the time. Is, or recently, when I finally, this light bulb went off. <laughs> is that, like, you can be having a good relationship with somebody for, like, a significant other, right? Something feels off. And you're just not willing slash able to give yourself to that person and you break it off 
right? Mm -hmm. You become the villain because you might have broken off something that they were all in on. Mm -hmm. But is it better to continue the relationship where, when you don't think that it's going to continue eventually? Or is it better to break it off right then, right there, and save them down the line? That's it, powerful. It's a question because like like for me, it's better to break it off earlier when you don't mm -hmm. when you don't truly believe that it's going to work in the long run because that could save you a year, a year, maybe two, to where like you're second guessing everything. Oh, yeah. Right? But they're completely in. And then that's going to lead to long bigger heartbreak down the road. Mm -hmm. Um no, now, I 100% agree with that. I think you need to break that off earlier mm -hmm. so that you can both progress and exactly. be where you need to be. Hurt, recover, progress. Yes. Right? Um, because maybe, like, I don't want to, I wouldn't, in this situation, there's multiple situations because, like, at work, you can be the villain and somebody at work, too. Like, like oh, yeah, 100%. The, in fitness, same thing. Like, but in this situation that I'm using, it's just like, what if those two years they could have found their other significant other that would have given themselves to the that person and then they could have continued on absolutely right but no you're holding on because you like it but you're not in yeah so but in that situation you become the villain mm -hmm. um and like hey man none of us are perfect right and accepting the fact that i'm going to be the villain in somebody's story and like being okay with it that was a big thing for me yeah, dude, actually, as you were speaking about that, I thought of how I've, like, sometimes that I've learned that in my life, and being a leader here in the warehouse when I was a manager, uh, unfortunately, I did have to fire somebody before, mm. and it's the same concept, like, if I don't fire this person, I'm going to hold them back, because, like, this wasn't the right fit for them, unfortunately, but by letting them go... I see them progress even more outside of here. So I've seen that a bunch of times with people here where they do, they do get let go or they do leave. And it's it's for the better for everybody because they're able to progress more outside of here and we are able to carry out our mission of helping real people get long-term results. And, and sometimes it's just not a good fit, but it's hard to let go. Yes, right, 100%. It's and the hardest thing you could do. I love that example when it comes mm -hmm. to work, right? Like you're the villain in that person's story right now. I, I know I am. Yeah, because <laughs> you were the one that made the decision. You were the one that cut ties, right? Mm -hmm. But they took it, they recovered, they got a new job, and they continued on with their life and their career. And it might be better for them. You're probably still going to be the villain. Like, you're still the guy that did it, right? <laughs> but that's just the way it's going to be. Um, love it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we discussed that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I have one more question, right? All right, let's get it. I was just <laughs> brainstorming, dude. Um, what is a piece of advice that no, no no let me rephrase it like this if you had a microphone in front of you <laughs> and a world watching what is the piece of advice you would give I know I'm hitting you with the big ones yeah today. real big ones I want to make sure I provide some value so think about it for a second yeah uh, I mean kind of you mentioned it earlier, and I actually saw Austin Montero. I don't know if you saw when he broke down their uh, the athlete search team workout. No, was, I did not. I missed it. Yeah, it was it was powerful. At, at the end, there's a funny little tidbit in there too. But uh, but yeah, I was just talking about the embrace the suck, hmm. like embrace the hard times because that's what's going to make you who you are. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to make you better. And the harder that is, the more you're going to grow. Mm -hmm. Like, I am extremely thankful for that dark time that I just went through. It's like, I know it's hard to be grateful for hard times, but be grateful for that because that's where you're truly going to grow. Like, I think back, like during that time, I actually uh, had a stress fracture in my shin from Ooh. running. Yeah, you remember back when Oh, I, was, I remember crutches. that, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, so like for something like that, that, that was a, a great teacher, mm -hmm. getting that injury for this specific Humbling lesson. teacher. Oh, yeah. Not being able to do anything that are, not anything, but not being able to do much that you love yes. to do. Yeah, if you've never had to be on crutches and have only one leg, essentially, it's, it's very difficult to just live normal life. Mm -hmm. uh, but throughout that, 
actually became very grateful for that because it taught me, like, hey, some people have to deal with this all the time. Yeah. And I was grateful for that. But also I was grateful for that hard time because it taught me so many different lessons. So when you get into those dark times, try to be grateful for that hardship that you're going through. Because like when I've done 75 hard, when I was training for that marathon, like all the two bodybuilding shows that I've done before, um, getting knocked down and working my way back up to customer service, like all those different really hard journeys that I, that I took were the biggest teachers for the best teachers in my life for different things. So just embracing this up and getting comfortable being uncomfortable is probably the best lesson that I could teach anybody because that's, that's where you're going to become who you really need to be. You have to go through those hard times. Look at any, like any great people like the Michael Jordans, freaking LeBron James, freaking Tom Brady, all these people, they went through some really, really hard times mm -hmm. to become the greatest of all times in their sport. They wouldn't have gotten there without that struggle. Mm -hmm. So you have to get used to it. That's what pushed them to get better. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. just taking time to be grateful for those hard times is extremely important to progress as much as possible. Hell yeah. That's that's a good one. And it's so time. true, too. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, those hard times are what stretches your limit as a human being. And that is how you get better. Oh, yeah. Progressive overload. Absolutely. Like you push the limit, back off a little bit, you push the limit again. Yeah, no, so that's, I mean, that's how I'm feeling in customer service now. Like, there, was, <laughs> there was a whole bunch of weights on me, so. I, I there was a it. fire hose just spraying you in the face. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, no, I see it. Did you ever uh, watch or read Naruto? No, I did not. That was one, I actually read the mangas. I was a little nerd when I was growing up. It's okay to be a nerd. I'm a <laughs> Dragon Ball Z nerd myself. Oh, Rest in peace, yeah. Toriyama. He just yeah. passed, the writer of Dragon Ball Z just passed away, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah, I think he he and Dragon Ball Z was a source of inspiration. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he wrote Naruto, too, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, I completely forgot. Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> Tanner. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry. But yeah, I was just going to say that Dragon Ball Z and things like even Naruto inspired people to, well, Naruto to train fighting, and then Dragon mm -hmm. Ball Z just to get jacked. Just to train yeah. as hard as you could to get better and stronger. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I was a big Naruto fan and read the mangas, so you actually have to read mangas from right to left. Yep. It's crazy, but... Uh, there was a fight between it was Rock Lee and Gara. So Rock Lee is this dude. He's basically just like a karate guy, mm -hmm. like a kickboxer essentially. And Gara has all the special these special abilities mm -hmm. that Rock Lee did not have. Um, but I'll, I'll get to my point in a second. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get a little backstory. Yeah, we first. gotta get nerd out on some Naruto a little bit real quick. But uh, but yeah. So in that fight, Rock Lee goes into his socks. He has like wrapped socks down here mm -hmm. he goes in there and pulls the weights pull these weights up of his legs that he has in there at all times and when he drops them they fall through the earth they're so heavy like Damn. they shatter the ground around mm -hmm. him they're so heavy and it's just like it's like holy shit he hasn't had those in there the whole time like he's about to kill this person <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no that's that's how it feels whenever you go through those really dark times mm -hmm. and get to where you need to be essentially yeah like I needed to be in somewhere like customer service for a while and it I felt like Rock Lee when he dropped those weights on the ground like like I'm ready to go now I'm ready to yeah you like, yep like, yep yeah that just, that just popped in my head when we were talking about freaking like progressive it. overload and then you get better and it gets a little bit easier mm -hmm. then you have to then you have to push it again you have to it has to you have to get into a hard time again yeah, because after that fight, he puts the weights right back in and keeps on going. Exactly. Yeah. He keeps training just like he did. He keeps pushing himself. Yeah. Love it. Mine is you create your own happiness in every situation. Absolutely. You do. Because, like, that job is not going to make you happy. No. That significant other isn't going to make you happy. That friend is not going to make you happy. Look, like, you might get, like, a small burst. Like, oh, I feel really happy with this person. That's going to fade. You have to wake up every single day and choose to be happy. It's not gonna be easy, right? And the thing is, is that the mind can't hold more than one thought at a time, right? So you can hold a positive thought or a negative thought. It's up to you. It's basic human psychology. Like, it is up to you. Now, I am not telling you to go through life looking at life with a freaking rose-colored glasses, <laughs> right? You have to be a realist, I get it. 
but you need those rose tinted glasses. You have to be able to see the positive in each situation. You have to be able to choose the happiness path. Right? Yeah, I really like the, the rose tinted glasses. Dude, you need them. That's, that's you a need great them. Analogy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm serious, y'all. Life is so much better if you can go through something and be like, all right, well, at least I learned a lesson. Right? Mm -hmm. At least I learned this. <laughs> right? It, it's so much better when you do that. Well, tweaked my back. Probably shouldn't do that again. <laughs> I can still walk, though. Mm -hmm. Like, things like that. Like, rose tinted glasses. You choose your own happiness. Yeah, you choose to be happy every day. That job, like I said earlier, that job is not gonna, even if it's your dream job, it's going to be stressful. So you have to choose to be happy. 100%. And it's completely up to you. So that's fine. Yeah, dude, that is, that's powerful. I and think so too. I think a big way that people can actually like stay positive and create their own happiness is starting their day with either like writing down something that you're grateful for, just starting with like reading something that's going to progress you. Cause I noticed that you know, when I start the day with a negative thought, it snowballs, snowballs the whole Big rest time. Of the day, every single day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All of a sudden everything is bad. Like, Oh, my badge right. didn't work. All of a sudden, oh, guess I'm just going to get fired today. Yeah, with that exactly. mindset, you might. <laughs> yeah, no, When you have that negative mindset, I've learned this from experience. You, it makes you take actions that <laughs> That reinforce that, that negativity. Mm, yes. So it yeah. sends you down that wrong path. And like I said, you are not going to be happy-go-lucky every single day. I no. get it, y'all. But being able to hold on to something good, just hold on to something good. Write it down. I'm a big fan of journaling. So like, wake up, and if you're in a negative mindset, put it on the piece of paper. Look at it. Find something good. Write a gratitude list. Call or text somebody. Let them know you care. Mm -hmm. Full circle. Because that might pull you out of it. Somebody else might say something that makes you laugh and pull you out of it. Because all it takes is like one second. And yeah. you can flip that negative mindset to a positive mindset. So it's up to you. And I think that's my biggest, if I had a microphone to the world. <laughs> like you have to choose to be happy. Because you can choose to be miserable. And that's just not a fun existence. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. and I, I know also from experience yes not, I, I've, been I've been there too i've been there too i've been there too that's the why me versus try me thing the only time oh, i say yeah. try right um hey since you mentioned that i just want to let you know that was when you did that speech in front of everybody yeah like sal said most of the company would not have the balls to stand up in front of everybody and give a, a speech that actually could help people like that like that was amazing but that helped me a lot i know i mentioned this to you before but when you gave that speech, I was, that was the start of that, that dark time. And that repeated in my head quite a bit. And it got me through that dark time. It was like, I can either choose to say, why is this happening to me? Or try me, motherfucker. I'm going to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just got goosebumps. Yeah. Thank you to hear you say that. Like, it means the world to me. Um, I, that's what I was going for. I just like, this helps one person. Because that's, that's how I went through that transformation. It's like, try me. Like, let's go. Got to change I, hours. I try watched it. it happen, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you flip that switch, dude. Yeah, it sometimes. Was awesome. I, I will admit, I, I burned a lot of dark emotions at that point in time. So, oh yeah. This time around, I'm a lot more happier because I'm choosing to be happy. And, <laughs> and but in the in the weight room, when I got to flip that switch, I can flip it. But it, it's now it's very very strategic. I'm not walking around like I'm gonna kill everybody. <laughs> Right, because <laughs> that's the way it was. No, I, 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 I can still smile, I can still laugh, and then get into that mode, right? Because I'm choosing to be happy every single day. Because, like I said, life is just so much better. But dude, I, I love you mentioning switching to that dark side when you need it. Because dude, the dark side's powerful. It's very powerful. It's and very powerful. When you use it in the weight room, like you were saying, yeah. it, it can change everything. Yeah, like that's that's how you set the arch, but. Yep. You also, you got to be careful too. I heard Andy talking about this re recently on the podcast, like use that dark energy, use that like, fuck you, I'm going to get this done mm -hmm. no matter what you think. Yep. But if you only tap into that energy, that's where it's going to eat you alive. hundred percent. Yep. It'll keep you in that negative mindset like we were talking about earlier. Like, yep. So tap into that whenever you need it. Yep. It's like putting the foot on the gas. Like sometimes you just got to hammer down, mm -hmm. but if you stay at running that hot for so long, you're going to blow up. 100%. And, and then you're on the Same side of the car. Yep, you're on the side of the road, and those people that you passed come right on past you because they're staying yep. consistent, right? So, I, honestly, I think that's a great place to end. 
Absolutely. Um, six, I want to thank you for stepping in. Of course. Right? Yeah. You're probably going to have to step in for me in the future. Hey, and <laughs> maybe one day, me and Derek will have to figure out this whole tech thing. And we're going to have to step in for oh, you yeah. as a producer. Mm -hmm. But that's just the way it goes. Right? Exactly. We cover and move. And we get it done. Yes, and to end it, I want to say thank you to everybody that's watching this. And if you made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, share, tag, whoever yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to. Because if we brought you any value today, helping us get this message out helps us tremendously. Absolutely. Um, so episode 14, Guys With Thighs, all done? Yes, sir. Beautiful. All Appreciate right. you.